While I do adore a lot about this show, what has always made it special for me is its depiction of the tense but loving bonds between Anne, Sasha, and Marcy. Now, that's not to say I don't love the imaginative world. It's so lush and vivid with its vibrant swamps filled with all sorts of strange and predatory critters and its glimmering, mysterious, jewel-filled underground caverns. And while I also love a lot of the side characters the show has brought in, and Andreas makes quite an imposing villain, both manically cheery and dementedly megalomaniacal, the real heart of the show for me, what really makes it special, and not just another good creative fantasy show, has always been the bond between these three. This bond is what makes it lucid and incisive, those moments of genuine pathos emerging from these typical fantasy scenarios, culminating in moments of beautiful yearning connection and quiet melancholy. Sadly, we have not gotten as many moments ruminating on this friendship and its implications since the end of Season 2. Season 3A hardly mentioned it at all, a quite questionable decision, as I've said multiple times, and while Season 3B thankfully brought back Sasha and allowed Sasha and Anne to heal their relationship, the bond with Marcy was not discussed in nearly as much depth as it would need to be considering what she did at the end of Season 2 and all that she has endured, and considering that she's the one who trapped them here in the first place, but that is thankfully remedied in the beginning of the end. An episode that has some weird points and takes some quite bizarre detours, but nonetheless has some of the most affecting glimpses into the bond between these three that the show has thus far offered. The friendship is painted in a more ambiguous and nuanced light, not as something universally positive for the three of them. That's not to say the show doesn't believe this friendship is worth saving and worth fighting for, but it is going to be a much more challenging task than simply saying a few nice words and bringing the team back together, or at least it should be after what we see in the beginning of the end and how it makes us reflect back and think again about the times that Marcy has abandoned her own desires and her own wishes because her friends aren't paying attention to those wishes and she doesn't want to seem like she's imposing on them. Preparing the friendship in All In, the second to last episode of the show, is possible, and it does need to be done, but it's not going to be easy. In the beginning of the end, we start with a flashback. While flashbacks aren't always the best options for shows trying to convey information about their characters, some shows are just really great at flashbacks, and Amphibia is one of them. The Core and the King, our flashback to Andreas's past, is one of the show's strongest episodes. And all of the flashbacks we've gotten about Anne, Sasha, and Marcy add a tinge of melancholy and somber contemplative yearning that the show itself, which is very eager and enthusiastic and comic does not always provide. In this flashback, Anne, Sasha, and Marcy are watching a movie of Marcy's choice at a sleepover. This is implied to be one of Marcy's favorite movies. She seemingly knows all the lines. And she is enjoying the process of showing it to her friends. The movie is called War of the Warlocks, and from the glimpses the show provides of it, it does not seem to be particularly good, to put it bluntly. 
three hours of trite melodrama and cliched high fantasy shenanigans. It seems like it's an amalgamation of every terrible Lord of the Rings ripoff that studios churned out in the early 2000s because they apparently did not realize that what people cared about in Lord of the Rings was the craftsmanship, the emphasis on nuanced, thoughtful storytelling focusing on characters placed in difficult situations, not merely the high fantasy aesthetic itself. Because of this, one can hardly fault Anne and Sasha for hardly being able to pay attention to it. They both fall asleep pretty quickly into the sleepover. Sasha straight up says to Marcy that she doesn't really care about the movie's plot points and Marcy's trying to explain them to her, which is a pretty cold thing to say, even if Anne is feeling the exact same way. Now, of course, Marcy doesn't admit she's hurt, as she's left sitting there, her face illuminated only by the TV screen, watching the rest of this movie. She never admits she's hurt. She always defers to what her friends want. She's accepting, perhaps too accepting, of her friends' ambivalence or even apathy in the things that she's interested in. She keeps her face tied to the TV screen, saying in unison with the movie's protagonist a cliched line about the power of friendship saving all, even while her actual friends lie asleep behind her, not paying attention to the movie. It is not the darkest moment of the show by any means. The show has had a few grim and macabre moments, but it might be one of the saddest and most honestly melancholic moments of the show. There are no histrionics here, no grand plot points. Just a girl left alone watching one of her favorite movies. Her friends not paying attention for completely understandable reasons. They're not bad people, no one's to blame. Perhaps Sasha was a little too harsh, but while she's more blunt than Anne, they clearly both feel the same way about this movie. They care about Marcy enough that they're trying to watch it with her, but they can't make it through it. They're not bad people in this situation, and that kind of makes it all the more heartbreaking. They're not trying to hurt her, but Marcy is hurt. She feels alone. She feels isolated. All she has is her nerdy interest to keep her company. And she's, of course, not going to admit how much she's suffering and how despondent she is, but it bothers her. And that loneliness that surrounds her constantly and her vehement disdain of that loneliness, her desperate desire to escape it at all costs, is a major reason why she was so desperate to run away to Amphibia. Why she never wanted to go back despite staying there for half a year without seeing her parents. Why she was so resolved to have her friends there in this fantasy world with her that she basically forced them to go with her and then never told them the truth. And also, let's think about how these are Marcy's closest friends. These are the people she is so desperate to keep close to her because she doesn't have anyone else, and because she depends so heavily on those friendships. These are the people Marcy is willing to pour everything in her heart out to, and they can't even stay awake to watch her favorite movie. Now, I'm not saying that's their fault. I am saying that there is this asymmetry in Marcy's friendship with Anne and Sasha. As I said before, Anne 
likes this friendship. It's neat. It's something she wants to keep up because she cares about Marcy. But if she lost this friendship while she'd be crushed, it would not be the end of the world for her. It absolutely would be for Marcy. That's the difference. Anne wants this friendship. Marcy needs it. Perhaps that's not healthy on Marcy's part. Though considering how resentful she seems toward her parents, considering how she seeks escapism to such a desperate extent from her normal life on Earth, considering how much everyone sees her on Earth as this clumsy, awkward nerd, it's completely understandable why she behaves this way, even if we cannot condone her actions. Marcy's general happiness and prosperity depend on this friendship. To the extent that she's willing to drag her friends into every part of her life that she's interested in, just because she doesn't want to be separated from them, she's willing to genuinely try and try and try to get them excited in this movie, even when it's clear they're not. And she takes them to Amphibia without their consent and tries to convince them that this is no big deal, even when they know, and she perhaps deep down knows, that it is a big deal that she did this to them. Anne, in a moment of maturity that I respect, acknowledges that she has not been the best friend to Marcy, and that she has not always been as observant of Marcy's needs and interests as she could have been. How Anne exactly came to this conclusion is questionable, considering that we have not seen her think about Marcy very often since the end of True Colors, and I think the storytelling there is a little sloppy. But also, anyone who says that this whole concern about Marcy just going along with whatever her friends want and never complaining and not really having her interests respected by her friends, that that plot point came out of nowhere, has not really been watching the show closely enough. I'll try to be nice, but I'll just kindly say that you really need to go back and rewatch the show, especially season two. Look at Battle of the Bands. Look especially at A Day at the Aquarium. Marcy completely swallows her own needs and wants to tend to the interests of her friends, and they do not seem particularly attuned to her interests. That's partly their fault for not paying attention, partly her fault for not being able to express what she really wants to her friends because she's so afraid of losing them. But it is a major problem for their friendship, and I desperately hope that they're able to repair that bond by the end of the show, and it does need a lot of repair, and I'm glad the show's finally paying attention to that. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more videos like this before anyone else can. Keep watching Amphibia. What do you think is going to happen to Marcy in these last few episodes? Other than, of course, that she's going to be freed. What do you think is going to happen to the friendship between these three girls? For me, it's the most important issue for the show to resolve before its conclusion. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. We'll be coming soon, promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.